Hello, it's Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy spring. I was just thinking the spring equinox is like Monday. So that means winter's coming to an end. Hopefully it is where you live. It's coming to an end where I live and the pollen is out. Any, do we have any Southern girls here? Holy crap. The pollen is freaking crazy and it's not going to be over anytime soon. So, um, I have a shoot to do, uh, this afternoon and I thought I'd do my makeup with you and then talk a little bit about, um, some bruising, how to cover bruising. Um, full disclosure, I had Botox earlier this week. And so it left some bruising like here, you can kind of see right there, right there. And then, um, there's always a little discoloration there. So I'm going to use something new that I've been playing with. I don't really talk much about, but I thought this bruising needs a little cover up and so do the inner eyes. So I'm going to check out this palette. Isn't it wild? It's crazy effective. Super, super, super effective. Looks really like, like whose skin is going to be this, but this is all color theory stuff. So if you are like an interior decorator, you like decorating a house, you like fabric, you like paint, and you're good with that. This same color theory is going to apply, except you're not putting the color on a wall. You're putting it on the skin. And so knowing the color of your skin. So like right now I look in this camera, I look super orange and like way more yellow than I do in person. But using like color theory, like you would if you were in art class or applying like interior decorating stuff is the same exact thing. And that's what I'm going to use a little tiniest dab of this palette, not all the things, but just of this palette to address some of that, that bruising. So if you've got bruising or under eye circles or darkness, what's actually happening is there's a blue undertone that's popping through your skin. All right. So if you're a Caucasian woman, what you need to do is not just cover up that blue or the purple, but you just need to micro address it, micro address it like you were going to, um, pixelate it. Like, so if you could imagine that color, it's super precise right there. Um, look, I'm going to use the teeniest, tiniest makeup brush, and I'm going to grab one of these colors. This is like a level three orange color, and I am going to micro address it. I need a smaller mirror. So I'm really going to pinpoint this needle prick bruise that I had from the Botox and that's maybe a little bright so I'm gonna go down a shade so that was orange level three let me see if I can do orange level five that might just so when you're gonna no matter what you're color correcting think about it in terms of like a master precision so instead of using a concealer so where was this other bruise you can kind of let me see here you can kind of see it. I see it more right here. It's got some green undertones to it. And so when you think about the color wheel, you want to move opposite that. So I need like a pink or a red color to combat green. And green shows up on our skin like mulchy, like dirt, um, like a bruise. And so this is really very pink. So if I'm going to micro apply, this color is probably really pink. So let's get rid of that and go up a shade. So I need like a red, here's a red orange color, a red orange pigment and really break that bruising apart break that hyper pigmentation apart with this crazy color theory idea applied to the skin so when we think about color theory it's easy to think about it when you're drawing on a white piece of paper like you learned about in art class and you think of the color wheel and opposite red is green opposite purple is yellow and opposite um what did i miss green purple 
no, green, red, purple, yellow, blue, and orange. And so you can apply that same concept to your face and to your skin and to your makeup. And what it'll help you do is apply a very minimal amount of makeup to address problem areas um, and even bring to life general areas of your face and of your skin. So that actually combated that um, green mulchy color. If you've got a spot on your face like sun damage or freckling, hyperpigmentation that looks like mulch or dirt, it's usually actually a green property and can be best canceled with like a pink um, or an element that has a little red in it. So some people are so fascinated by this. I love this idea. I think it's really awesome. I think it's very smart and it leaves me with a very minimal makeup product left on my face. So let's take a look at some of this darkness. There's a little red, there's blue, and I don't necessarily, I wanna cut the red, and so I'm gonna be really precise in applying the concealer. Whoops, whoops, whoops. And it's not so much about covering it as it is neutralizing the discoloration which in turn will match the rest of the skin in the surrounding area does that make sense so let's just paint that on real precise so one believe it or not if you've ever tried to do this let me know if you just study your face look at what i'm going to call like distractions or imperfections, hyperpigmentation. If you simply address those areas on a micro level, it will actually give your face a really fresh look. And you won't have to go in with make, like a lot of makeup or a whole foundation or a whole primer, or not necessarily a primer, but like a full coverage look. It'll give a very refreshed look and then it'll be the most you because what it'll do is it'll let your, your beautiful skin show through, which our skin is gorgeous. If it's hydrated, it's got like, there's a lot of fat and oil in the skin, which reflects light. And it's really, really, really pretty. And it's the most natural you that there is. So think about that. Think about when you look at your face and you're like, what do you want makeup to accomplish? Um, what are you trying to enhance with makeup? How can you improve those areas? If you could say, oh, if I didn't have dark circles, that would be one thing. Or if I could warm up my face, that would be one thing. How can you precisely by pinpoint do that and try and address those areas really precisely with a color that will neutralize or enhance or shadow and take a step back and look at the overall look. Once those things are filtered out, essentially, once they're filtered out, how, how is that changing the overall look? And for my friends who are like 90s babies, what movie was it? Was it Mean Girls when people were like, oh, she's like a Monet. She's up close, she's messy, but from far away, she looks good or something. <laughs> what was that quote from that movie when we were growing up? If you're in your 30s or 40s, you might remember. Okay, so being able to identify excess color and then working to correct it can be a huge, huge game changer. So what I'm going to do, what I want to do before, I, I should do this last, but I want to show you. So if, this is a, a light blue color. It's like a blue level one intensity. So if I take a little of that and put it around my lip, it will enhance the shadowing and light catching of that border. So remember colors that are light will re re um, reflect light. Colors that are dark are going to recess or hide. And so what I can do is use that color almost like a highlighter, but it's a really small amount of makeup. But what you're doing is working 
the color properties instead of just applying makeup all over and then layering it on and on and on and on you're kind of just working the color aspect of it so i use that in there to brighten i'm going to use a little bit of this b1 color here to brighten the inner eye too just a little really precise color corrections can do a lot to change it up and to enhance what you want to enhance and so generally on our face, the darkest part on our face is usually right here in the inner eye. And it's especially true as we age, but it's true on just the human body. So by brightening up this area here, it will lead the look to be brighter and more open with just a fraction of product. Isn't that awesome? It's so interesting. I think this is so fascinating. So what I'll do, I guess I'll just stick with this whole application idea, is, you know, a couple distractions gone, and I already like the way that it looks. It's really fun to play with. What I'm going to do also is kind of cancel out a little of the redness blue tones around my nose. This is always an area that gets a little discolored whoops that was too bright i'm gonna put that one back and if you want to see what i'm working with just send me a message it's kind of hard to keep showing it here when we're when i'm live i've just run out of hand so i'm gonna add a little color there mm, i think that's kind of made it a little worse let me pop that back and let me see here so here's my palette they're organized, but I can, these are little magnetic things, so I can pop them in and out and it's really great. Let's do, I'm gonna do this OY one color. And I have a couple freckles here on the side that merge together and create like a dark look. And so I wanna neutralize those, whoops. So my brush is super teeny tiny and I'm being really, really precise to apply it just where that darker color is coming in. Right under here. This is always an area that needs a little help. And in a, in a, in a way that's like, if there's just one small thing to change, I think my skin's a little dry, to be honest with you. And you're real precise in your application. The actual product should fade away. Okay, really fun. I'm gonna use a little broader brush because I wanna be able to next apply under my eye lash, my lower lash line. So this is a level one orange here. I'm kind of going to go right under here. It's fun when I wear this kind of makeup. It's almost like nobody asks about my makeup because it just looks like my skin, <laughs> which is what I want. But at the same time, it doesn't look like I'm wearing anything. And it's hard to describe without seeing it. So it really just sets the skin off to look really awesome. But it looks so awesome that I definitely have to add a little flair, um, like fill in my brows and do my mascara. <laughs> okay, so the distractions, distractions that I think about are pretty much just covered up. And I don't know how well they're translating on the camera, but it's super, super fun to play with this. Okay, what I wanna do is tone a little bit. So I want to take a little of a darker color, a darker shadowing color. I'm going to pop this out. This looks like contour, but what it'll do is kind of like neutralize a little red. It It's very um, light in its dusting application. And so I'm going to use it really lightly to sculpt out my cheekbones, but di in a different way than contour. I'm gonna, it really is working with the color theory. It's kind of neutralizing the green and it's really customizable to your skin tone. So 
you can get color recommendations based on your skin tone and the distractions that you would be interested in covering up. And if you're, if I get really close, you can still see my freckling through there. It's a very light shadowing, really light shadowing and makes a huge difference in freshening up the skin. It's really, really neat. going to do a little under my lips. See, you can barely even tell that it's there, but the slight shadow that it creates is, does a really good job. And I'm going to just cinch that, cinch the brush and do a little nose contouring there. You can really see that brightness that I added to the under eye. And again, that was a blue color, like a really light blue. So cool. All right. So a little sculpting done. Next, I want to add a little blush coloring. So I'm going to take this, this is like actual orangey red color, but it's a deep version of it. And I'm going to add a little flush. I can still use this as a lip color, believe it or not. These things are awesome because the lip to use them as a lip and a blush is like a stain, but it's, it's a, um, it's not a gloss. It's like a tack, tacky isn't the right word, but it's like a, um, Con concentrated cream is what I want to say. It's like a concentrated cream color. And so it, it doesn't move like it doesn't move. I've been playing with, with this for over a year. Last year we went to Disney and we were masked the whole time we were in Disney. You know, it was hot. It was, it was warm. It was in the eighties and playing with this kind of makeup. It lasted all day. The concentrated cream of this kind of makeup is so, the staying power is amazing. Plus it's coupled with the fact that you don't wear a lot actually. Um, and so there's not a lot of makeup that would get moved around. So I honestly have been playing with it for like a year, but when I was in Disney and playing, wearing it at Disney in the heat of the summer, in masks it didn't move but the color palette is kind of bizarre so these the concentrated cream you don't need a lot it's precision color correcting and so you're really the the key to it is study your face study your face look at if you were to just take away maybe just three things that were bothering you about your face if you thought okay these are three things if these three things were gone what would my overall would it change the overall look and being able to use those in conjunction with a little color theory to neutralize them not cover them but to neutralize them can be really really impactful and really just show off your skin but again you're going to think, oh my gosh, it doesn't even look like I have makeup on. It's just a couple things are gone from my skin and makes a huge, huge difference. So it's really kind of fun. All right. So a little brows. And one of the questions, I actually don't get very many questions, unlike some other bloggers. Um, I, I don't. But one thing that people ask is, I thought you said your eyebrows were microbladed. And they are microbladed. Um, I've had them microbladed for several years now. I've had it done a couple different times. And it's awesome. Yes, it's awesome. But because it's a tattoo, which my kids are always like, mom has a tattoo. It's funny because it doesn't look like a tattoo. But when I put the makeup on my skin, if, especially if I do eyeshadow, it'll cover the tattoo. So then it becomes like a um, faded tattoo. <laughs> And I like the brows to stand out. I think they're, I think brows are like the best thing for, for a face. And so I still will darken them. But when I wake up, I have brows. Yes, it's amazing. But if I'm going to use a um, powder eyeshadow, I still have to sculpt them out. My brows, that's pretty common. So if you're interested in getting microblading, yes, it's the best thing. But you probably will have to still fill them in if you're wearing makeup. And that's pretty normal. So um, that is probably one of the few questions that I actually get asked. Um, all right, so I'm going to do just a little inner eye here. I did do that blue there before. It looks great, but now that I have my palette out, <laughs> I'm going to 
just do that a little bit. So that was the blush I have on my eye. It's awesome. It doesn't stay. That compact, I'll be talking more about this particular kind of compact and this particular kind of makeup. It's got an awesome staying power. It's not for everybody because it looks complicated and it's not the solution for women who wanted a quick routine. But if you're the kind of woman who really loves beautiful skin and who enjoys the art of skincare, that is a product that's for you. And um, I'll share more about it as time goes on. Okay, I'm going to let my eye primer, my mascara primer, whatever it's called, eyelash primer, <laughs> sit for a second. And I'm going to do my favorite lip with you. So my favorite neutral lip is to take a foundation color and go over your lips. And a cream foundation is good for this because it's not drying. And it's almost just like a creamy lipstick. Cover your lips in foundation. Um, again, cream foundation is good. Then I'm going to grab, well, I might as well just grab my contour brush or a lip liner and outline the lips with a brown pencil or your contour color. Uh-huh. Don't have too much to talk about right now. Okay, then take an, a pretty blush color and just come right in here. Uh-huh, like right up in there. I think I went a little darker. Underneath. And then add a gloss on top and it's the prettiest neutral lip. I love these NYX Butter Glosses. So good. So good. All right, so eyes are never going to look complete without mascara, at least mine. Uh, they're getting lighter as I get older, and it sucks. I really hate it. Hi, 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 hi. Okay, so I'm going to do kind of lengthen these long. The primer does a great job. The uh, mascara primer does a really great job at helping them be long. And a great lengthening mascara. This is my favorite. I love mascaras. Like, love them. Like, probably have, well, definitely have way too many. But a tubular mascara does a really, really good job. If you're interested to learn about that concentrated cream, that, like, last the one I was telling you about in Disney World, uh, let me know. Color matching for that is a little different and happy to share and help you with it. Um, but that is different than a foundation, than like a 3D foundation, a cream foundation. But the color correcting properties are amazing. I would say you want to be willing to learn and play with it a little bit. Um, but it really being able to just correct a couple distractions on your face will bring your face to life like you like you've never been able to imagine. It's really awesome. Really, really awesome. Um, and so especially if you're somebody that's into decorating or into color, um, you like to paint or you're a painter or you just want to play it because you play with it because you love makeup, I will definitely help you. I have an absolute lump of a lash there. That doesn't seem to be getting any better with that. <laughs> well, that looks awesome. Okay, probably have to go fix that with my little eyelash tool that I don't have here in my window. So, oh, I think I'm making it worse. All right, I'm going to go fix that. You have a great weekend. Um, stay tuned for some fun summer looks coming up soon. And, um, Catch you later.